So I've used the Nothing Phone 2 way for almost a month now and I think I'm ready to give a detailed review on the same and how well it has gotten after the updates and more importantly if it is still worth it after the hype and a good phone to buy if you have a budget of let's say around 25k in 2024. So I'm going to divide this review into 5 major aspects, build quality and hardware, software and features, battery life and charging, camera, performance and gaming and the conclusion on if you should buy this phone or not. Also I'm not going to focus much on the specs and you can read them right here on your screen or I'll drop a link to them as you will literally forget them once you start using the device. Let's start off with the hardware and build quality first. So the phone 2 way is entirely made up of plastic you can say and mainly the frame outside here is also plastic and the back too which isn't a bad thing per se but an attempt to cut the cost and the good side is that you will not be able to break that back plastic easily. The device feels light in hand mostly and the weight balance is done quite well. It doesn't feel that bulky as compared to the Nothing Phone 1 though it is wider than most phones out there. The front has Gorilla Glass 5 protection and the punch hole is small enough and does not disturb your videos or movie experience that much. The buttons here are metallic and very tactile and clicky and they do not feel cheap at all. The glyph lights on the back aren't that intrusive now and I think this implementation is better than what was on the phone one and it is much more deeply integrated with apps like Uber and Zomato but still somewhat of a gimmick I would say. Plus I have been using the device without any case and you can see how it looks like. I have also used the matte white skin here and this invisible screen protector from Gadget Shields and applying the skin was as easy as 1 to 3 and you just need a hair dryer for this to end perfectly for you. And something similar for the screen protector as well. Applying it is easier than ever and since it is a film type and not a tempered glass it doesn't add much to the bulk and kind of looks invisible. Plus I love the fact that there is everything in the box so you can apply it quickly and make mistakes freely as the solution covers up for it so I'll definitely drop the link to buy these in the description area and also add an extra 10% off promo code for you guys so make sure you apply that before ordering. The display here is 6.7 inch 120Hz dynamic AMOLED that can adjust the refresh rate from 60 to 120Hz. The viewing angles on the display are pretty good and I love the fact that it is a flat display so applying the screen protector is not an issue on this one. It also supports HDR10 so you can experience the same in supported apps like YouTube. Overall the build quality here is good enough at this price but I would recommend a skin or a case as it slips easily out of the pocket and the back plastic might get scratched a little too easily. Talking about the software part and this phone runs on NothingOS 2.5.6 which is based on Android 14 and is one of the only and closest skin to stock Android out there with some UI elements on the top which are minimal and look really good too. It is easily by far the second best flavor of Android after Pixel Skin. Though nothing hasn't given the latest security update after the launch, still it did get a bunch of updates one after the other and the system is more stable than ever before. There is no bloatware or any unnecessary apps here and even the Nothing X app can be uninstalled which is cool. Plus like other brands you get the AI features like the AI wallpaper here and some other customizations like an app locker and a somewhat silent call recorder too in the Google Dial. It has a lot of new widgets and this Nothing OS is well optimized. So kudos to Nothing for that. I also like the fact that it will get 3 major updates which is a good thing for a sub 25k phone as it even made Samsung to do the same with M series devices. The battery life that I get here is really good, around 8 hours easily with 5G and Wi-Fi and around 6 to 7 hours on 5G only. And the 45 watt charging here isn't too slow or too fast as it takes an hour to fully charge and you can watch the charging speed test video to see which adapter is the best for you. And also a tap on that subscribe button here would really help the channel out. Now let's talk about the performance first. So nothing made a big deal out of this Dimensity 2 7200 Pro SoC that they say is optimized for nothing OS. And initially I had my doubts. But having lived with this all this time, I'll say it holds up well to the claims nothing made. Initially we had a lot of glitches in the UI but now after a lot of updates the device feels smoother in overall day to day usage and I don't have much complaints now. Also let's have a look at the benchmark scores. So on Geekbench the score is around 806 in single core and 2039 in the multi core score. And now on Android 2 the device has a score of around 6,52,000 points. And I'll keep an eye on these scores to give you guys a raw idea about the performance with updates. 
and I also did some gaming on this device just to give you guys an idea about the performance and I would say it is not a gaming centric device. PGMI here runs on smooth and extreme settings and that means you get only 60 FPS at max which ideally should have been at least 90 FPS in 2024. The game runs fine for like short periods around 15 to 20 minutes at a stretch and after that the device heats up a little and the performance drops a little too. And I would not recommend you to buy this device if you have gaming as your priority. And you can go for devices from IQ or POCO as they will offer you better specs at that price. So if you have a normal day to day usage which involves little to some gaming and or not so heavy titles and if you use the device for video streaming or social media that much then this is a well optimized device for those scenarios. Coming to the camera part and we have 3 cameras here. No poor quality sensors, 250mm primary and ultra wide angle sensor on the back which can shoot up to 4k 30fps and a 32mp selfie camera on the front which can take up to 1080p videos only. So I tested all these by taking the samples and here they are on your screen. So you guys can have a better idea on how the images look like in real life. The primary and ultra wide angle camera took some really decent shots be it in low light or daytime and there was not that much of a color shift in them. The camera does a lot of things right like capturing the right colors most of the time and natural skin tones without over processing that much. And things like the portrait mode have good edge detection too which has improved with updates. I also found out that it has focus issues at times which I think nothing should definitely fix and it cannot focus on close up subjects in one go after the last update. At night time the shot taken are crisp with deep blacks and well detailed too, something I did not expect to be right at this point. And these are some samples from the front facing camera which I feel is fine, nothing great to be honest and it does not take well detailed shots in artificial light which I feel is the weakest part here. And lastly here is a video sample to give you guys an idea about the stability and quality of video shot from the phone too well, which I feel could be better honestly. And overall the camera is getting better with every update and I have high hopes from nothing regarding the same. Lastly things like the call quality is good too but it had some issues with Wi-Fi calling which can be fixed with updates. So if you are in the market to buy a device under 25k and if your priority is user experience and clean UI with no ads or apps and if you are not someone who plays a lot of games then you can definitely have a look at this device as it looks unique and offers a similar experience too. And that's it for now. This was the review of the Nothing Phone 2A. So how has your experience been with this device? Do let me know in the comment section down below and don't forget to press that like and subscribe button for more such content. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.